So here are three steps from my journey on befriending the Holy Spirit. Step one, I had to go through repentance. Repentance is to change our mindset and lifestyle from self-centeredness to God-centered. I wanted to admit my wrongdoings of not acknowledging Holy Spirit in the proper place in my life, which is the power that works within me, guiding me to all truth. You see, I had to confess the Lord forgive me for not acknowledging you, for not engaging with you, Holy Spirit. You see, I had knowledge of him, but I, I didn't engage with him. You see, I knew Father God, God the Father, that he's the creator of the universe, that his great love towards us sent only his son Jesus so that we could have a relationship with him. You see, I knew God the Son. Jesus died on the cross, Messiah, saved us from our sin to avoid eternal separation from God the Father. And his resurrection was given to us so that we can have victorious life, so we can have a life of peace, joy, and love. With Holy Spirit, I knew that he was a divine person. I knew of him. I knew that he was not a force, that he was not atmosphere, but he was a person. And he was not limited to people falling down on the floor. He was not limited from people running around with flags, people yelling and speaking in tongues. I knew he was fully God, but I didn't know that he was my friend. I didn't engage with him as my friend. Like the scripture says in John 15, 15, John 15, 15 says, you have called us friends. And so I had to repent and say, I didn't embrace your role in my life as a spirit of truth. I was focused on God the Father, God the Son. I know they are one, but Jesus is seated at the right hand of God the Father, and he has left the Holy Spirit to be with us to engage with him. So I had to confess. I had to confess that and confess my sins. And so I had to be specific with my sins. Someone said, don't confess in tongues because you did not sin in tongues. For example, I had to go deep and I said, Lord, you know, when I went to Ikea to return an item, when they were doing a transaction, Lord, I saw that the amount was larger than what uh, they were supposed to give me, but I didn't say anything. But then to justify my guiltiness, I asked the salesperson, I said, is everything all right? Is the transaction fine? She said, yes. That was my justification. I was blessed. So walking that way, she calls me back. <laughs> and she tells me that she did the transaction wrong and still she had to do so. I, I had to tell God that I walked away. Yes, she called me back and the transaction was right. Father, there's something in me that you need to work on. And then I had to confess. I said, you know, when me and my husband talk, you know, we, we talk about things, we talk about life, but it's a particular time that we were talking and I noticed that I was saying something negative about the situation and you kept prompting me and I kept on and I kept on. So Father, I confess for my judgmental spirit in that. And so go in with repentance. Repent for, for not acknowledging him as Holy Spirit in your life. Repent from whatever that you see that does not align with the word of God. The other thing in repentance, I had to appreciate who he was. 
The Holy Spirit, you are the one who, who helps control my thoughts. I appreciate you. You're the one who, who helps me deal with my feelings and my emotions when hard things come against me. You're the one who reveals God's thoughts so that I won't fear the unknown, so I won't lean to my own understanding. I appreciate you. You're the one who helps me in weakness, oh God, and you make sure that I rely on your word because your word gives me life. So with a humble heart, I went on and I repented. And so that was step one. Step two, establish a system for fellowship. And so the Holy Spirit's primary role and responsibility is to mediate, to act as a peacemaker, to restore harmony, to make peace, to intervene, and to unite those who believe with Christ. Basically, the role and the responsibility of the Holy Spirit is to glorify Jesus, to put the spotlight on him, and to draw our attention to him. And so in order for the Spirit of God to move in us into a greater submission to God so that we can bear much fruit in the world, a system has to be created for fellowship. A system has to be created for fellowship. In my personal journey, I've learned that I was familiar with the Holy Spirit, but I did not take time to develop a friendship with him. And so to start, with fellowship, you need a system. A system, the definition of a system in the area of habits is repeatable processes designed to achieve a specific outcome. I found out that my prayer life, right, I did have a prayer life, but it lacked organization. My prayer life was not organized, so I did not have a system. So I did two things to organize my prayer life and to create this system. The first one was I incorporated a prayer watch for my prayer routine. A prayer watch is a specific time of the day or night to pray the purposes and the plans of God. You see, I had a morning routine. I had a morning routine that I'll have my tea or coffee, oatmeal, or go to the gym. I had my evening routine, I had my night routine. And these were solid. And so I needed to do that with my fellowship with the Holy Spirit so I can have a consistent practice to meet with Holy Spirit. Whenever we pray, there is a specific watch, okay, connected to the time. In the Bible, a watch was a period of time in which soldiers remained posted on duty. The Bible highlights different events that took place during these watches. Prayer watches are normally set in three hour intervals and they're around the clock. There are eight prayer watches. And so we know before I go into the prayer watches, we know that 1 Thessalonians 5.17, if you can put that up, 1 Thessalonians 5.17, it says, pray continually, pray without ceasing. So we pray, we can pray, and God has said it, we can pray about anything and everything, anywhere, at any time. Keep that in mind, knowing this, we should also be aware that there is specific things or events that took place during times in the Bible. Yes, pray continuously. But when God wants you to go to a different level in your prayer life, he'll make this known. All those prayer watches, there are eight of them, are connected to scripture. So I'm just gonna read one of them. And once you start committing the fellowship with the Holy Spirit, I've seen that the Holy Spirit will use all the resources, bring all the resources to position you to make sure that he's known by you. And so I found this book 
in, in Amazon, and it's watch and pray, understanding the eight prayer watches. So I'm going to read one. It's the fourth prayer watch, and it's from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., and it's based on Matthew 14, 25 through 26. If you can put that in. Okay. And he says, And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. And so this is the fourth prayer watch from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., this prayer watch is associated with the manifestation of God's power. And so, yes, pray continually. Pray like you are doing, you know, currently. But um, when you choose your prayer watch or you choose your prayer time, research and see what happened during that time. What is the scripture in the Bible? So if this is associated with the manifestations of God's power, then this is a time you can declare God's word over your situation. Okay? And in your prayer watch, you can command the morning. You can establish the spirit of prosperity in this prayer watch. And there are many. And so with that, I selected one of their prayer watches. So I can organize myself in prayer and have a system for fellowship. So my first prayer watch I selected was the third watch, which is 12 midnight to 3 a.m. Now keep in mind that you don't need to stay in prayer from 12 to 3. You know, if you're led by God, definitely. I don't want to discourage anyone. Just give him 12 midnight. Just give him the beginning of whatever hour that you choose. You'll see what, how God moves in your life. It can be 12, 12, 15, 12, 30, and he goes up to, it can be until 3 a.m. Because he knows that you're in the journey. And so I started this prayer watch in South Carolina when I visited my grandchildren. And I was fully into it. And so, you know, I, I did my thing 12 midnight to 3 a.m. And so when I came back home, I was excited. I built my routine and still continued from 12 to 3 a.m. But then Deacon Frank said something to me and said, this prayer watch doesn't work for married people. <laughs> Along those lines. So I had to choose another prayer watch. So yes, God first, right? Always. But being mindful, using wisdom when choosing your prayer watch or selecting a time to pray. So life and things won't easily pull you away from your prayer room, amen? From your upper room, you know, from your chamber, okay? Because the enemy will find anything to pull you away. The second step, I need you, Frank, for this. <clears throat> the second step, the, the second thing I did to organize my prayer time is to maintain focus in the prayer room. And so I heard of a pastor uh, speaking, and he said when he, it was time, you can bring the chairs, when it was time for him to get serious with Holy Spirit. So what he did was he got a chair, one chair, and he placed the chair in his prayer room. And in his prayer room, what he did was write on the piece of paper that the Holy Spirit sits here. And so he placed the paper on the, on the chair. He got another chair and he sat on the chair. And every time he came into his prayer room, however led, he will worship, praise God, speaking tongues, or you know, what have you, and pray. But he was reminded that he needed to sit down and have a conversation with Holy Spirit. So he would sit down and, you know, ask Holy Spirit questions about his ministry, about his life, and what he wants to do in his life. He will stay there and wait for instructions. Before long, they had formed a friendship, and he saw that his ministry grew. 
He had a healing anointing in his ministry. The Holy Spirit was moving in his church. And he said it was the result of him being serious about the relationship with Holy Spirit. Remember that he was a pastor, okay? So what I did was I took note and I went to Ross, so I couldn't get a chair. And so what I said was, I'll get a stool. So I went to Ross and I got a royal stool for the Holy Spirit, a beautiful one. I took that stool and went in that room and set it down. I sat on the floor, held it, I put my, my right hand on it, and I said, Holy Spirit, welcome here. Welcome here, I want to know you. I want to know you. And so what I'll do is do the same, whatever I'm led, I get, what, if I'm frustrated, vent my frustration to him, but I'm reminded every time I see the stool is I need to find out what's on your mind, Holy Spirit. What's on your mind for your people at Rilimo? What's on your mind for my workplace? What's on your mind for my life? What's on your mind for my home? And most importantly, what's on your mind for your purpose on earth? Amen? And I saw that it's working well. And so the question that I asked him is, what's on your mind? What's going on? And I got that question from Facebook. If you go on your Facebook app and open it up at the top, Facebook is always asking what? What's on your mind? And I said, wow, Holy Spirit, that's a beautiful question for you. Amen? Amen. Again, fellowship with the Holy Spirit is when we know him as a person. Yes. You know that he is the third person of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But when he says that we are his friends, we have to develop, we have to nurture, we have to foster that relationship. And so it is possible to have communion with Holy Spirit and neglect his word. It is possible to have communion with Holy Spirit and not forgive. It is possible to have communion with Holy Spirit and defend your old ways. It is possible to have communion with Holy Spirit and have a judgmental spirit. It is possible to have communion with Holy Spirit and only talk about your audacious prayers and only talk about your home and only talk about your needs and have no interest about what he wants to do on the earth. So a friendship is necessary, amen? So step three, develop a friendship with Holy Spirit. Develop a friendship with Holy Spirit. So friendship with Holy Spirit is when you obey the Holy Spirit. John 15, 14 says it. It says, you are my friends if you do what I command. You hear that? You are my friends if you do what I command. The Amplify says, you are my friends if you keep on doing what I command. So Jesus' definition of friendship is not when you hang out with him. Mm -hmm. It's not when you sing to him. Okay? Jesus' definition of, of friendship is not because the dis disciples hung out with him. Jesus called them friends because of how they showed their loyalty and obedience to him. So Israel Hewden, the songwriter, is right. Yes, I am a friend of God, and he calls me friend. I'm not going to attempt to sing it. Okay? Yes, I am a friend of God. He calls me friends. That's John 15, 15. Let's see that. I call you friends. And the fellowship with Holy Spirit will never grow into friendship until obedience is there. And so Jesus promises us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is here. He has come. He has come to guide us into all truth. And that's what he says in John 16, 13. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. Holy Spirit will tell you and me the truth 
about who we are in him. He will tell us the truth about how we fit in his plan. So the same way, the same way as Jesus was with the disciples, okay? The same way as we are with Holy Spirit because Holy Spirit is here. Our intimacy with Holy Spirit and being his friend is dependent on obedience. Again, it is dependent on obedience. We can commune with Holy Spirit. We can spend time with Holy Spirit. We can love and sing to the Holy Spirit. But I should say, and we work out our salvation with fear and trembling by obedience. At the same time as his power is working in us to supply the willingness, the power to obey his will. 